How do you keep calm before the big fight like this? How, what are you doing to kind of relax yourself and just kind of, I know you got your family with you, you got your girls to kind of keep you smiling. She was actually trying to steal the show out there when you were doing your dance. But how, how do you keep calm? Um, it's just something about, it's just, it's just how I always been. You know, I can't just say I practice it or, you know, I've been meditating or something like that. It's just, it's just something that's always been inside of me, somewhere I've always been, even as a little kid. You know, I always had that calm demeanor, so, you know, it's just, it's just me. Talking about man down, man down promotions. Talk about that, where that started from, and then strap season, kind of how the collaboration, all that, and the initiation. Well, I started man down promotions. I actually have uh, three fighters on this card, so um, you know they'll be fighting on the card. They're all undefeated. Say one, he has one loss, so you know, it's going to be a great event. And they're all from Dallas too, so you know I want to keep it at home first, and then bring these guys up, guys like Burley Books and Amon Rashidi. So um, you know I just want to keep it at home and, and keep a small stable. I don't want a huge big stable because you can't focus on everybody with a big stable. So these these guys that I have on the three, I can just build them up and get them on cards and hopefully them fighting for a world title and put them in the best opportunity. Hey, after the fights, you always call out everybody out that doubted you before the fight in the press. We know you pay close attention. Is anything said in the press or by anybody that pissed you off a little bit that you, you can't wait to answer? I always pay attention. You, you have to find out post press conference. <laughs> uh, you said that you're going to try to go for Manny Pacquiao after this, and if not, uh, Terrence Crawford. Is that kind of the, the two main guys you're looking at next? It's um, one or the other? I mean, it's a lot of guys on that list. Like I said, I could move up to 54, or, you know, I could stay. You got Danny Garcia, you know, you got Pacquiao, you got Crawford, you got a couple more guys, Uga, so... I mean, I got options, so I'm not worried about if I don't get the Pacquiao fight, if I don't get Terrence Crawford fight, you know. So the quality fights up there for me, so I'm not worried about it. Sean Porter was here earlier. You said that this is a legacy fight for you. Is that the same for you as this a legacy fight? Oh, well, definitely. I mean, this is, you know, a unification fight, so, I mean, I'm fighting. I'm defending my IVF belt. He's defending his WC belt, so two champions fighting, so it's definitely a legacy fight. You know, the victory of this fight, I feel like, you know, is number one because he has two belts and he's unified champion. So, you know, this is going to be a, this is a big moment for both of us. You know, Fred Angulo just won and he thanked out him and Jay Rock did it when he upset hurt. Um, Javante Davis just invested in some kind of trucking business. Can you talk to us about how him and his influence outside of boxing and just guiding the fighters um, to a future outside, outside of boxing? Uh, well, the main thing with me is even when, before I turned pro, like, I was deciding who I was going to sign with, you know, and Top Rank was coming at me with a big signing bonus and things like that. And it was my father really got me to sign with Al because, you know, he was saying it's not about right now, it's about later. And when I talked to Al, and I was talking about, you know, life after boxing, he was talking about retirement. And this, I haven't had a professional fight yet. And he's talking about retirement and, <laughs> and life after boxing. I'm like, man, what the hell are you talking about, life after boxing? Like, I'm not worried about that right now. I'm worried about the fight. So, you know, Al always been that guy that, you know, always, like, every time I talk to him or we have a conversation about business and things like that, he always talk about life at the box and always talk about, you know, setting, setting us up for the long run. And, you know, boxing on a little bit part of your life. So, you know, that's why, you know, you wonder why a lot of guys stay low to Al and a lot of guys, you know, don't go against the grain because, you know, he not only care, he care, you're a boxer, but he cares about the person outside of boxing. So, just like, you know, other fighters that he didn't help, like Paul Williams and a lot of guys who pay for their funeral and stuff like that, you don't hear about what he does that thing. So, I mean, you know, he helped me out a lot. So different Roth RAs and different things like that, you know, to, to help my career out the side of boxing and for my kids and stuff like that. So, you know, I never go against the grain with Al because he's not been nothing but good to me, not only outside the ring, but inside the ring. So, you know, it is what it is. People can say what they want or they loyal to Al for no reason, but, you know, he's setting us up for, for a future outside of boxing, not just right now. Yeah, I know you're in the moment, but do you get, have you gave any consideration of what you want to do after boxing? You want to be a promoter? You want to be, have a trucking uh, company? What do you want to do after boxing? See, that, that's, that's what I'm telling you. Al said, been setting me up where, I don't have to do nothing okay. <laughs> <laughs> without retire from boxing. You mentioned moving up to 54 twice so now. I might go fishing or something. <laughs> you know, you, you know, become a um, little league coach or something. Okay. <laughs> you mentioned moving to 54 twice now. Uh, what fighter at 54 makes sense for you? Is there somebody that gives you a challenge at that weight? That's a lot of guys. I mean, you got Laura. 
um, you know, you got, you not, you know, I'm not gonna step on my, on my bro toe, um, Jamel, Jamel. I'm not gonna step on his toes at all, you know, because he, you know, wants to be, you know, undisputed champion. That's his weight class, been the same stable and stuff like that. So, you know, you got Laura that's out there, and you got a lot of different other fighters that's out there that, you know, I can fight. It makes you feel fight.